Chinese mercenaries are fighting for Russia in Ukraine. Chinese mercenaries are fighting for Russia in Ukraine according to a video shared by a Russian military blogger on social media. The footage shared by Russian military correspondent Pavel Kukushin on his Telegram channel shows two men sitting opposite each other at a table communicating in Russian and Chinese via a voice electronic translator. Newsweek reported about this. There is no language barrier. A volunteer for the People's Republic of China communicates with the commander of the Piat Nachka International Brigade using an online translator, wrote Kukushin. Russian President Vladimir Putin has reportedly been under increasing pressure to take a more aggressive approach to his war against Ukraine and introduce a full-scale mobilization in the country to bolster its manpower and has for months been targeting citizens of Cuba, Armenia and Kazakhstan, a former Soviet Republic bordering Russia through various means. The Chinese unit in the Piat Nashka Brigade is growing. More and more Chinese are constantly arriving. Our Chinese brothers have also come to us, a Russian serviceman said in the video published by Kukushin. Ukraine's military intelligence directorate has claimed that Russia has recruited mercenaries from Syria to fight in Ukraine, while the Ukraine National Resistance Center, which is run by the Ukraine government's special operations forces, said Malaysians have also been spotted fighting for Russia in the occupied Donetsk region. Some Indian citizens recruited by Russia told AFP that they were promised roles that wouldn't involve fighting on the front lines, but when they arrived in Russia, they were trained to use weapons including Kalashnikov assault rifles and deployed to Ukraine. We have got some of them out and are working on getting the rest out now, India's Ministry of External Affairs told the Financial Times. Konstantin Sonin, a Russian-born political economist from the University of Chicago, previously told Newsweek that Putin is likely deterred from announcing an open mass mobilization because the propaganda narrative that he and his entourage are pushing is that Russia is not waging a war but is conducting a limited-scale military operation. Russia keeps new T-14 tank, Su-57, out of Ukraine over reputational damage fears. Russia has touted the new T-14 Armata as a highly advanced and formidable tank for dominating the modern battlefield, yet there has been no evidence it has seen action in Ukraine or that it has even been deployed there, for that matter, according to Business Insider. The publication says that Moscow has also sidelined another much-celebrated asset, the supposedly fifth-generation Su-57 fighter jet, raising the question of why the Russian military would leave top weapons behind. The answer, per a new Western intelligence assessment, is that the Kremlin likely fears the reputational damage of losing one of its T-14s in combat. The Russians have described the next-generation T-14 main battle tank, which was introduced in 2015 as cutting-edge weaponry, featuring new technology and automated functions like a remotely operated cannon, sophisticated sensors, onboard drones and defense against anti-tank weapons. The emergence of the Armata initially sparked concerns among some Western analysts who worried that it might rival NATO tanks like the M1 Abrams, Leopard 2 or Challenger 2. But years into its development, the T-14 program remains plagued by problems such as manufacturing issues, delays and a reduction in fleet size, all while the tank's reliability has also been called into question. Russia's first guards tank army was supposed to receive the T-14 in 2021, and Moscow was even considering deploying the tanks to Ukraine at one point in early 2023. Kiev has denied Moscow's claims about the tank's involvement and said it hasn't seen any armatas in battle consistent with the UK's assessment. According to Business Insider, the relationship between the T-14 and the Ukraine war bears similar hallmarks to what British intelligence and aviation experts have previously said about the Su-57, which is Russia's highly touted first attempt at a fifth-generation fighter jet, the kind of aircraft that should be able to make a difference in a war like Ukraine. Russia is highly likely prioritizing avoiding the reputational damage, reduced export prospects and the compromise of sensitive technology which would come from any loss of the Su-57 over Ukraine, Britain's defense ministry said earlier. Putin, the unification of Russia and Ukraine is inevitable. 
the spiritual reunification of Russia and Ukraine is inevitable. Russian President Vladimir Putin said this during his speech at the World Youth Festival. I am sure that thanks to people like you, as I said, sooner or later, at least on the spiritual level, unification will happen. This is inevitable, Putin said at the meeting with the participants of the festival. Putin stressed that it is necessary to eradicate everything that prevents this. This is prevented by the most disgusting manifestations of nationalism. This is a disaster that poisons the lives of many peoples, including Ukraine today. He refers to the large number of flashpoints in the world, said that any war and any hostilities are a tragedy. Yes, indeed, the situation is difficult. There are many problems and many flashpoints, he told. Here, we have a conflict with our neighbours nearby. Hostilities are underway. Could it be more problematic? Putin continued. This is always a tragedy when people fight each other. People die, after all, they get injured and so on, he added. Putin has lambasted the West's double standards in regards to conflicts around the world. Putin recalled at a meeting with participants of the World Youth Festival that the United States took action in Iraq, Syria and former Yugoslavia without the UN Security Council's approval. Well, if they have permission, why are not other countries allowed to protect their vital interests in the same manner? He asked rhetorically. The Russian president told the meeting how the West justified its bombardment of Yugoslavia. My counterparts used to tell me repeatedly, well, yes, we did it without the UN Security Council's resolution. But the war had been raging there for so many years. Eight years of bloodshed in Donbass. Something had to be done. Putin recounted the words of his counterparts.